Welcome to Apex Philosophy, the perfect place to find motivation. Be sure to subscribe and listen every day so you can become your best self. Please like and share the video to help inspire others. Today we are continuing our three-part series on the Enchiridion, or the Manual by Epictetus. This is the second part of this series. If you missed part one, I encourage you to go back and listen to that as well. We covered chapters 1 through 20 in our previous video. Today, we will cover chapters 21 through 32. The Enchiridion, or The Manual, by Epictetus, paraphrased by Stephen Shade. Chapter 21. Keep in mind that death, exile, and other terrible things are part of everyday life. But above all, death should be at the forefront of your mind. This way, you will never do anything dishonorable or excessively desire anything. Chapter 22. If you want to study philosophy, be prepared for ridicule and disdain from others. They may mock you for suddenly becoming interested in philosophy and may even question your newfound confidence. However, stay true to your beliefs and principles, and eventually, these same people who initially made fun of you will come to admire you. On the other hand, if you give in to their teasing, you will only bring more ridicule upon yourself. Chapter 23. If you find yourself trying to please others in order to fit in, you have lost sight of your own goals and values. Instead, focus on being true to yourself as a philosopher. And if you want to be perceived as one by others, be true to yourself first and foremost. Chapter 24. Do not allow thoughts such as these to distress you. I will live without honoured and be a nobody. A lack of honour does not make you a failure. Not having honour is not your problem. You cannot be negatively affected by someone else's actions. It's not your responsibility to hold a high position or be invited to fancy dinners. So how can this be considered a lack of honour? Why worry about being a nobody? Especially since you ought to be focused on achieving success in those things that you have control over so you can become a man of great worth. But my countrymen will be without support. What do you mean by lacking support? They won't receive money from you. Who said that those things were your responsibility and not someone else's? And who can give something to someone else that they don't have themselves? Your countryman may say, acquire money and then give me some, so we both may have some. If I can acquire money and live modestly, faithfully and generously, show me how and I will acquire it. But if you ask me to give the things which are mine and which I am using for good, so you can use them for things that are not good, you are being unfair and wasteful. Besides, what would you rather have? Money or a faithful and humble friend? So help me be such a countryman and do not ask me to do things that would prevent me from becoming that. But my country will be without my help, you say. Again, what kind of help are you talking about? It won't have shelter or food because of me. So what? Shoes aren't made by blacksmiths and weapons aren't made by shoemakers. As long as everyone does their own job well, that's enough. And if you provide the country with another faithful and modest citizen, wouldn't you be useful to it? Yes, so you can't be useless to it either. What place shall I hold in the community, you ask? Whatever you can as long as you maintain your fidelity and modesty. But if you try to be useful to the community and lose those qualities, how could you be beneficial if you become dishonest and unfaithful? Chapter 25. 
Do not be jealous of a man for the things he has obtained, for he has paid the price for them, which you have not. If these things are positive, be happy for the person who received them. But if they are negative, don't be upset because you did not receive them. And remember that if you are not paid the same price to obtain those things, you will not be considered worthy of them. You cannot obtain anything without paying the price for it. For example, say a man is given preferential treatment at a banquet or has been greeted or consulted more than others. You should be happy for him. Remember that you can't be expected to be treated the same way if you don't do the same things to earn them. How can you expect to be treated equally if you don't visit someone as often as another person or accompany them when they go out as someone else does or if you don't flatter them as someone else does? It's unfair and greedy to expect to receive these things without paying the price. For example, the price of lettuce might be a small coin. If someone pays the coin and gets the lettuce, and you don't pay the coin and don't get the lettuce, don't think that you're receiving less than the person who got the lettuce. In this situation, you still have the coin you didn't spend. It's the same with other things. If you're not invited to someone's feast, it's because you didn't pay the price, which is usually flattery or attention. If it's worth it to you, pay the price. But if you want the things without paying the price, you're being unreasonable and foolish. Don't you have something in place of the feast? You have the option of not flattering the person and not tolerating them when they enter the room. Chapter 26 we can learn what nature intends for us by looking at things that happen to everyone. For example, when your neighbour breaks a cup, we naturally say it's just something that happens. You should also think this way when your own cup breaks. This same reasoning applies to bigger things, like when someone else's child or spouse dies. Everyone says that this is something that happens to people, but when it happens to us, we immediately cry out in despair and say how terrible it is for us. We should remember how we felt when we heard about it happening to others and apply that same acceptance to our own situation. Chapter 27 Just as a bullseye is not intended to be missed, evil does not exist in the world for the purpose of causing harm. Chapter 28 If someone were planning to give your physical body to anyone you met along the way, you would be upset. But if you allow someone to control your thoughts and emotions and become distressed or upset if they insult you, aren't you ashamed of this? Chapter 29 in any task you undertake, consider the steps that come first and the consequences that come afterward. If you don't, you may start the task with enthusiasm, but then be ashamed when things turn out poorly. For example, if you want to win at the Olympic Games, think about the training and discipline required beforehand. You must follow a strict diet, exercise at specific times and avoid indulging in certain pleasures. You must also be willing to suffer any injuries or losses that could happen during the games. If you still want to compete after considering all of this, go for it. But if you don't spend the time to consider these things, it's like you're just playing different roles without truly committing to anything. You'll be like a monkey who imitates whatever it sees without truly understanding it. You haven't put any thought into your actions, but just went through the motions with a casual desire. Some people have heard great philosophers like Euphrates speak and have a talent for speaking themselves. So they also decide that they want to be philosophers. Think about what you want to do 
and consider if your physical abilities and personal traits align with it. For example, do you want to be an athlete or a wrestler? Look at yourself in the mirror and consider if you are built for these activities. Keep in mind that different people are naturally suited for different things. Also, consider the sacrifices you will have to make, such as giving up your social life, changing your diet or being looked down upon by others. If you still want to pursue this path despite these challenges, it's important to fully commit to it and not dabble in other pursuits. Choose to either focus on developing your own abilities or to focus on external things. By doing so, you are also choosing to either be a philosopher or a regular person. You can't do both. Chapter 30 Duties are universally derived from your relationships and titles. Is a man your father? Then it is applied that you should take care of him, yield to his authority in all things, and patiently receive his criticisms and advice. But he is a bad father. Does nature guarantee you a good father? No, but only a father. Is a brother unjust? Well, be the bigger person and act like a good brother to him, despite his actions toward you. You cannot control him, but you can control yourself. It is best to keep yourself in harmony with nature. And remember, he cannot hurt you unless you allow it, and then you will have consented to it. In this same manner, contemplate the duties of every relation or title. Neighbour, citizen, commander. You can deduce each one's corresponding duties. Chapter 31 As to reverence for the gods, it's important to have the right beliefs about them. This means believing that they exist and that they govern the universe justly and well. The next thing you must do is align yourself with their will. Obey them, yield to them, and willingly follow them, no matter what is going on in your life, as if being ruled by perfect wisdom. Thus, you will never blame the gods or accuse them of neglecting you. The only way to do this is by withdrawing from things that are not within your power to control and only characterising what you do have control over as good or bad. For if you suppose other things to be good or bad, it is inevitable that something bad will happen that is outside of your control and you will have no one to blame but the gods. Every creature's natural inclination is to run away from that which causes them pain and run towards things that benefit them. It is impossible for them to rejoice when they experience pain. This is why a child is upset at his parents for denying him sweets. This is also what made Polynesis and Eteocles become enemies. They both felt that the empire was good for them. This is the same reason the farmer and the fisherman curse the gods and why the merchant who lost his wife or child does the same. For where your interest is, there too your loyalties lie. So be careful to regulate your desires and aversions so your reverence to the gods will also be regulated. Desire only which you have control over. It is also incumbent on everyone to offer sacrifices and first fruits according to their customs to the gods, purely and not carelessly, neglectfully, begrudgingly, or extravagantly. Chapter 32 When you seek out divination, remember that you don't know what the outcome will be, and you're seeking the diviner's guidance to learn about it. However, you should already be aware of the nature of the event before seeking out the diviner. 
If you have a philosophical mindset, you should understand that events that are not within your control cannot be considered good or bad. When consulting a diviner, don't bring with you feelings of desire or aversion, as this will cause you to approach the situation with fear or anxiety. Instead, understand that every event is neutral and nothing to be concerned about, no matter what it is. It is within your power to make the best of any situation and no one can stop you from doing so. Then come to the gods with confidence as your counsellors and afterward remember who you have chosen as counsellors and whose advice you will ignore. Follow Socrates' advice and only seek divination when the situation is beyond your understanding and reasoning and you have no other ways to find a solution. When it's our duty to support a friend or our country, even if it means facing danger, we shouldn't consult the oracle about whether we should do it or not. Even if the diviner warns us that the omens are unfavourable, this only means that we may face death, injury or exile. But we have our own reason to guide us and it tells us to stand by our friends and country, even in the face of these risks. Listen to the greater diviner, the Pythian God, who once threw someone out of the temple for not helping their friend. Thank you for listening. Look for part one and part three. Comment below, what was your favourite chapter and why? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe and we'll see you next time.